am back to uh, work on the Chrome tutorials. I am getting ready to paint, repaint, I should say, my shorts, which have been going through a ton of testing of colors. Um, I've reapplied a base coat of white. You can see it's pretty dull. It's not very reflective. Catches a little bit of reflection, but it's uh, not very sharp. And um, same with the fronts. And I have started working on one of my new helmets. And I have a troop tomorrow, and I'm going to try to have these finished tonight for tomorrow. They'll just be silver, no gold on them yet. But I started um, on the head. You can see it's kind of the same quality as the shorts. It's not very reflective. And um, I hit this with, uh, this is just 2,000 grit sandpaper. And then um, I've gone straight to using the polishing compound. Skip the rubbing compound for tonight. Basically, I'm using a, just a regular piece of uh, paper towel, and I dampen it just a tiny bit. I mean, when I say a tiny bit, it's you can't squeeze it getting water out. It's just a just a little tiniest bit of water, and then uh, the rubbing compound just hit a little bit on there. Just to, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just barely any, just enough to make a little coating. And uh, you take one of these areas that's dull, and basically just polish it in, like the directions say, and uh, you know, usually I do this three or four times, but I'll just give you a little example here of how it comes out um, just after a few seconds of rubbing it. So you put it on, and then uh, I usually put the cloth over and wipe it off again, and already it's starting to get some polish, and if you see there, it's pretty reflective just in that one little quick little hit with the polishing compound. Now, it looks good on camera, but it needs about 10 more minutes of this in each area just to really, really get out any tiny imperfection that you want before you apply the silver just to get it where you can start to make out details and things across the room in light objects. So, uh, yeah, this is just kind of the step and just a lot of this. So I'm going to work on this a little more and uh, get the whole face polished up and then uh, I'll show you where it's at. And we'll compare it to the shorts so you can see a harsh comparison of just paint next to the polished version. This is the, the polish. And it's not perfect. There's a few little chips. I actually caught the paint with my nail and it's a little bit thin in a few spots. It's not as easy to tell on camera. But uh, if I had some more time, I would probably get another coat of paint and uh, polish it one more time. But since the stuff is basically needs to be ready to wear by tomorrow, it's one o'clock in the morning right now. I gotta keep on it. So here's a comparison of before and after. This is shorts before polishing. It's really bright still. And then the, the helmet after. You can see the reflection. Let me turn off this light. It's a little darker, but may show off reflectivity a little bit better. So you can see, even uh, with no chrome on it, you can still see reflections of the room. Pretty clear. And that's important. Whereas this is you know, hazy and fuzzy, no reflection, but same paint, exact same paint, just polished and not polished. So I'm going to go polish these shorts and uh, set up the airbrush and I will be back to uh, show that step. Alright guys, I am in my tiniest little laundry room here and um, basically this is the only place I can do this and stay somewhat out of the humidity here in Florida. Um, a couple things you'll need. Besides, uh, basically, you're going to need the your all-clad 2 paint, uh, an airbrush setup. I have a little compressor here that is going to stay right around 15 PSI, um, either a toilet paper or tissue paper, and uh, you'll see what this is for in a minute. Uh, gloves, not necessary, but I like to use them because I don't know what this metal will do once it uh, gets on my skin. Uh, I'm, I'm using a respirator particularly because I'm in this room, but it's probably a good idea regardless. Uh, definitely, definitely, if you have to work in a small space like this, wear one because you don't want to be breathing these fumes, and there will be a lot. And, uh, you know, have every parts ready to go. This all-clad stuff evaporates very quickly. The carrier is, I'm not sure what it, what it is, but uh, if you leave it out for a few minutes, it'll, a ton of it will evaporate. Now, I don't know if you can see this, because I've kind of been moving this stuff around, but it all settles. Let me see if I can get a good shot of this here. Maybe maybe this other bottle is a little easier to see. It uh, 
the metal will settle on the bottom. So even if I tip it upside down, you'll see the metal sort of stuck there. And you need to shake these for probably a good Almost minute. Almost done shaking this crap up. Got two bottles. This one I, I used for some tests the other day, so it's about half full. So I'm just going to combine these because um, with the shorts and the mask, I'll probably use about a bottle and a half. This will probably do it. Basically, you just you know, let the stuff free. As you use it, you want to give it a stir pretty often because the little metal sinks pretty quickly in the carrier. So you want to make sure that it's you know, constantly moving around inside here. So if you fill it up too high and you slosh it, it'll, a little bit will come out of the cap. You can see I've already made that mistake a few times, but uh, it's easy just to refill it. So I got my other bottle ready to go. And I'm gonna put the gloves on here, put, like so. And um, before you start, I'm gonna tell you how I do this here. When I turn the compressor on, I set it for 15 PSI, so it's got a really light flow. And um, the amount of uh, material that comes out, you can change based on this little uh, tip here. You can adjust this. And I don't open it very much. I just do it so just a tiny bit will come out, enough that I can I'll almost, you almost can't see it at first until. It, you get a little bit down, it uh, goes on very, very, very thin. So that's just that part of the setup. Um, I'm going to hook this paint up and I'm turn the compressor on here and I'll get started. So here we go. I'm taking this off. All right, so you see I have my first bit of metal on there, and it looks pretty good on camera, but um, this is where the toilet paper comes in. This stuff dries extremely fast, so you spray it, and within a few seconds, it's, it's already dried here. So what I do is I get some toilet paper, just a little piece or some tissue paper, whatever you have nearby, and uh, it's pretty soft. And then, um, what I do is I just buff buff the metal and it does a few things. It will let you know if there's any that is not setting well. Like sometimes if there's a little leftover polishing compound or anything, the metal won't sit on the surface right away. And if you buff it once, any spots where it's kind of going to thin, it'll come off. And it also polishes the metal and it embeds it into the paint a little bit. And uh, yeah, this one I didn't wash quite as good as I should have, but it still comes out pretty good. Once you put a second coat, it'll usually just uh, take right down. But um, one thing that's kind of interesting is if found if you buff this, uh, the, as you buff it harder, it actually infuses into the paint and becomes very, very sturdy. So on my suit, the areas like the, uh, the chest, and the forehead, like areas that I really polished a lot are almost impervious to getting lifted up from oils from your fingers. Whereas some of the other areas that I sprayed and I polished a little bit, um, they are more sensitive to the oils on your hands. So if you hold them a lot, the metal will start to lift off. But the areas that I really buffed a lot, they haven't been affected at all. They look just like they did when I, when I did them. So it's something to know. Uh, the last test I did the other day, I actually used a heat gun and just hit the area really quickly just to heat it up a little bit and then polished it and it seemed like that did a really good job of helping it infuse to the paint. It didn't add a, a lot of heat, just, just enough to warm the area because it seems like when you buff it and it right to the point where it starts to get warm is when it starts to really set in. So you can see there's a couple of thin spots but it's it's pretty reflective already right there just from that first little little blast. So, um, what I recommend is using this 
tissue paper often, more often than not. The first time I did it, I sprayed the whole piece and then I went to buff it and I realized there were spots that would get thin. But if you do this as you go, it sometimes actually fills the thin areas with the loose, the loose metal will move around and fill the thin spots and it'll reveal spots that need to be touched up so that you don't go through the whole process and then realize it later. So I'm going to continue doing this piece and uh, I'll turn the video back on once it's done and show you what it looks like. Alright, so after this last coat, it's, uh, it's pretty good. You can see it's very reflective. And this is only just a, a really short time buffing this. I only started this tonight, so you know, if you put in some extra time, you can get some really, really good reflections. And like I said, this is, I haven't done any major filling or anything. So you can see the kind of metal you can get. You can see there's a couple little thin areas right in here. That's where it's a little bit softer. But um, as I, I'm going to do the shorts really quick. And then uh, I started the back of the head too. I haven't buffed this yet with any tissue paper. So it's just the uh, just a quick first coat. So, if you buff it, you know, some will probably lift off here and there, a little, few spots, but uh, as it sets in, it will get more reflective. Let's see. So you can see, and there's a couple little thin spots, you can see them right there where it rubbed through. And I think it's, um, honestly, it might be something in the water that I use to wash it. it might be uh, leaving a little residue, because I wash them pretty good this time. And uh, it seems like the more I use water on them, the more time they get these spots. So it seems like after I buff it once, the uh, and I apply a little more, it, the spots go away. So you can see it's pretty, pretty much a mirror. You can see the the iPad, my hand, everything. And this isn't even fully buffed, or it's not even as thick as it should be. It's kind of a thin coat, and it's still very very reflective so yeah this stuff is amazing and uh, so far I've only spent I don't know probably like six bucks in in all clad and maybe four dollars in Krylon paints to get this so um, yeah it's it's pretty good so I'm gonna head on I'm gonna keep doing these um, get the few coats I'm gonna try to get the head covered really nicely and then um, look at this again See that little thinner? You can see it right there. Needs a little bit of touch up, but uh, you know that's that's why I say to use the tissues as you go. Because uh, the first time I did this, I painted them all, took them all inside, then I buffed them that night, and then I found these thin spots, and then I had to set back up to fix them. So. If you do it while you have everything set up, you can always touch up really quick, and it's you know make it good to go. But yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome stuff, and. Um, you can see the areas that I polish the most get really, really good reflections. You can see there's my iPad. You can see uh, tennis rackets up here on the wall and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. Next step, I'll get on to doing the gold tinting. I found a method that I'm going to use for my suit, and then I'll show the other method that if I had to start over from scratch is uh, the way I would go, just because it's a really consistent, easy way to keep a mix that looks the same all the time. If you need to do touch-ups, you don't have to worry about, you know, getting your blend right or anything. But uh, for this one, I'm going to be doing the ink method. And I'll show how to do that in the next video. So hopefully this helped out. If you got any questions about this, let me know. And uh, I'll try to answer them. And then when I put the, all the videos together, I'll try to incorporate everybody's questions. <clears throat> Did a little bit of touch-up on the chrome on this tonight on top of it. This one was actually already pretty good, but this is what I was talking about is uh, up here where it's been very polished in. This area doesn't react to uh, touching the same as if uh, like down here when I initially did it I didn't polish this section that much and work the uh, metal into the paint, but uh, up here I did and this section has held up amazing and down here it's worn off more than the top and even though it's probably had actually less touching but I mean you can see reflect re reflectivity is super nice so yeah I think this is a, a good testament to this method